Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Dr. Lee and I come from Bukit Matajang in the northern part of uh, Peninsula Malaysia. And at this point now, at this time now, I'm staying in Johor, in Kluang. Okay, so welcome again everyone. And uh, as you know, I'm actually now uploading videos of my book, my second book which is uh, written in two languages, in Bahasa Melayu and in English. Actually, the Bahasa Melayu um, and English version is only for the explanation part. As for the exercises, they are totally 100% in English. This is an example. Okay, so this is the second book, a very special one, because my first book, 38 chapters altogether, was 100% English. But due to a lot of uh, requests that I use Bahasa Melayu to uh, explain further so that it's easier to understand. So I actually, um, due to all these requests, I actually agreed uh, to do one book in uh, Bahasa Melayu and in English. And uh, this book has uh, 40 chapters all together or 40 lessons if you like. This is the one, this is the content. So if you look at 40 lessons or 40 different chapters of totally grammar, I would say that it's quite complete, although it is the second book. So level one or book one, which I, I uh, had published some, you know, before this, Actually, uh, it was 38 lessons, different parts of grammar. And I added two more for level two. And I would say that um, even if you have all the grammars, uh, grammar, um, parts of grammar put together, I don't think it would, it would be even more than 50 uh, chapters, different chapters. And for me, level two is already 40 chapters, so it's actually quite complete. Now, if you say it's easy, it's not that easy. But if you say it's difficult, it's not that difficult too. I would say that it's very, um, the standard that I set is quite general. It's quite common, uh, meaning to say across the board. That means um, for primary school students who have a certain level, they can actually uh, use this book to further improve. For secondary school students, those whose uh, level is uh, still pretty much or very much um, basic and above, they can also use my book two on, and book one as well, of course. And, uh, you know, adults too can use my book. So what is the difference between level one and level two? Actually, if you're talking about difference, because quite a number of people ask me, so what is the difference between level one and level two? I would only say that the difference is the level. Level 2 is a little bit more difficult than level 1, that's all. A bit more challenging. But the lessons that are needed, the lessons that are in book 1 and in book 2 are the same. So you just imagine, say a primary school student, year 4. A year 4 student would have to learn example, articles, conjunctions, prepositions the most common ones. So they would have to learn positive and negative statements. So when you go to secondary school, or let us look at secondary school students, do they need to know a and the articles? Do they need to know conjunctions and but so because? Do they need to know prepositions in, on, under, over, for, about? They have to. Even when you reach university and after university, working time, you still need your a uh, and the. You still need because, but, so, or. You still need in, and, on, uh, in, on, under, over, about, for, from. You still need all these things. So I would say that if we are talking about the different parts of grammar, I would say that even if I publish seven books, seven books would have the same, the same parts of grammar. All seven books, let us say, the highest level being level 7. You still have to learn that all 7 levels will have articles, conjunctions, prepositions, positive and negative statements, 
positive and negative questions, adverbs, adjectives, and so on. So the only difference is the level. The questions that are given becomes more and more difficult, more and more challenging, that's all. But the things that you need to learn are still the same. It's different from mathematics, I think, or you know, science, like, uh, uh, like say, form 4, you study this, form 5, you study that, you know. English, no. English, right from primary school, we already want students to know the different parts of grammar, like a uh, and the, uh, like I mentioned just now, conjunctions, prepositions, adverbs, adjectives, they have to learn. So there's no question of saying that, oh, I learned this in primary school, so secondary school, I learned something else. And then when I go to university, I learn something else, uh, uh, things that are different from uh, secondary school. Uh, I don't think so. I really don't think so. Okay? All right. Now, I'm going to um, teach you, I'm going to discuss and share with you, I will say, lesson 32. You know that this book has 40 lessons or 40 chapters. We are now at chapter 32 or lesson 32 in two life. So we have eight last lessons and this book is totally in my channel. Every question, every lesson, every page. Okay? So lesson 32, exercise 1, exercise 2, exercise 3, that's all. My next video will be lesson 33. So I finish this one whole lesson in one video. So adverbs, what are adverbs? You see this, you will understand that adverbs are descriptive words. They describe, they describe verbs. Whereas adjectives describe nouns, people, animals, things, places, situations. But adverbs describe verbs. For this level, describe verbs. As you go higher, you will know that it also describes adjectives. That is another part. That we talk later. We talk about this now. So first of all, you must know that there are three types of uh, adverbs. Adverbs is one big topic. And in adverbs, you have three parts. Firstly, you learn adverbs of manner. Adverbs of manner means how? How did it happen? Adverbs of time. When? When did it happen? When did this action take place? Adverbs of frequency. How often does this action happen? How often does this um, verb happen? So first of all, adverbs of manner. So I didn't write the whole sentence because there's simply no place. So I will read, okay? The first one is... Um, the waitress smiles sweetly to her customers. Sweetly, L-Y. Normally, normally. Adverbs, you have L-Y, 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 or I, L-Y. For example, happily. Happily. Throw away the Y and change it to I, L-Y. So all these L-Y words are called adverbs. And this whole row, we call all the adverbs here, adverbs of manner because it answers the question, how? How does the waitress smile? She smiles sweetly. Sweetly is an adverb of manner because it answers the question, how? Number two, the old couple walk slowly across the road. Slow. Slow is an adjective, but slowly is an adverb. So adverb, you have L-Y. So I will ask the question, how does the couple walk? Uh, walk slowly, walk quickly, walk hurriedly. L-Y, adverb. Adverb of manner. It answers the question, how? The dancers dance gracefully on the stage. Gracefully. Again, I will ask you the question, how do the dancers dance? They dance gracefully. So it is an adverb of manner. It answers the question, how? The doctor talks kindly to his patient. Kindly. Kindly is an adverb of manner. It answers the question, how? How does the doctor talk to the patient? Oh, talks kindly. Okay? 
the students study quietly in their classroom. So again, quietly is an adverb of manner because it answers the question, how? How do the students study? They study quietly, okay? Our kitten meows loudly when it is hungry. Meow. Meow is a verb. So when you describe the meow verb, you put ly to the word loud. So meows loudly. So it answers the question how. How does the cat meow? It meows loudly. So it is an adverb of manner. Amin and his sister eat quickly because they are late for school. So how do they eat? They eat quickly. It answers the question, how? Therefore, it is an adverb of manner. Okay, so usually we put L-Y behind or I-L-Y. Usually, most of the time, basically. Okay, that means there are exceptions. Okay, now we proceed to exercise two, adverb of time. It answers the question, when? When did it happen? When did this action take place? Mr. Rakesh took his children to the zoo last Saturday. So last Saturday is an adverb of time. It answers the question when. When did he take them to the zoo? Question two. The hawker is selling some drinks now. Now is an adverb of time. It answers the question when. When does the hawker sell his drinks? Or when is the hawker selling his drinks? Lisa goes for her piano class on Wednesday or on Wednesday is okay. So again, this is an adverb of time. It tells us when she goes. Goes is an, it's a verb. So on Wednesday is a verb that is an adverb that describes the verb go. Kitty and Lydia will go for a movie tomorrow evening. So when? It answers the question, well, when will they go? Go is a verb. So the adverb is tomorrow evening. Tomorrow evening is an adverb of time because it answers the question, when? What time? Lila is, Lila's aunt is baking some cookies in the kitchen now. Again, it answers the question, when? Now. So now is an adverb of time. It describes baking, baking cookies, that baking is an action. Number six. My father drank a cup of coffee just now. Just now is over. It's not now, it's just now, it's over. And it describes the action drank. So it is an adverb. But because it answers the question when, just now, therefore it is called an adverb of time. Okay? Isa is learning to drive at the moment. At the moment means now. So drive. Drive is an action. And the adverb that describes the action is at the moment. Now. So it is an adverb of time. It answers the question when. Okay? The bus from Seremban will arrive soon. Soon is an adverb of time. It answers the question, when? When will the bus arrive? Soon. Arrive is a verb. So soon becomes an adverb and it answers the question, when? Therefore, it is called an adverb of time. The boys went fishing at the river three days ago. Fishing. Fishing is an action. Fishing is a verb. Therefore, three days ago describes the verb fishing. Therefore, it is called, it is an adverb. And it is an adverb of time because it tells us when it happened, when they go fishing. Ida will help her mother to mop the floor later. Later is an adverb of time. It answers the question, when? When will Ida help to mop the floor. Mop is a verb. Therefore, later is an adverb. And because it answers the question when, therefore it becomes an adverb of time. Alright? And we go to the last exercise which is called adverbs of 
frequency. Frequency means how often? All the time? Always? Usually? Never? Or sometimes? All these words tells us how frequent an action takes place. Okay? This exercise is like this. We give you a sentence, the original sentence. And then we want you to put this word, this adverb, often, never, always, sometimes, never, usually, seldom, often, usually. Where should we put? In a sentence. This is the exercise. So let me read the original sentence first. The boys play football in the field. Then I want to change the sentence or I want to describe the sentence that it is not only done one time or two times, it's often. So where do we put the often? We put the often in front of the word play, in front of the verb play. Whereas adverbs of time, we put it behind the sentence or it can be the beginning of a sentence. Okay, it can be the beginning, it can be the end. But bearing in mind that although we can put it uh, in the beginning of the sentence is normally for you know when you want to stress on the time for higher level students or we use it to teach primary school students so for us here we maintain at the end of the sentence and this where do you put all these uh, adverbs it can be in front of the verb or behind the verb it's okay so let us do number two the moon comes out in the daytime this is the original sentence now we are going to put in the word never. Where should we put the word never? The, the word never should be put in front of the verb. The verb is comes. So answer, the moon never comes out in the daytime. Put it in front of the verb. My grandmother always wakes up early in the morning. So the original sentence is, my grandmother wakes up early in the morning. So we ask the question, when? I'm sorry, we ask the question, how often? Always. That means all the time. Where do we put the word always? In front of the verb, wakes. So the answer would be, my grandmother always wakes up early in the morning. Our neighbors go jogging in the park with me. This is the original sentence. Now, we are going to put the adverb of frequency sometimes inside this sentence to further describe how frequent this action takes place. So where do we put the word sometimes? We put it in front of the verb go. So the sentence would be, our neighbors sometimes go jogging in the park with me. We must talk to strangers. Original sentence. Now, we are going to put in the word never in this sentence. The adverb of frequency. The adverb is never. Where should we put the word never? Put it in front of the verb. So, identify the verb. The verb is talks. Talk. So, we put it in front of the word talk. We must never talk to strangers. The members of the English club usually have their meetings after school. So, now... Oh, I'm sorry. The members of the English club have their meetings after school. This is the original sentence. Then, we are going to put in an adverb of frequency. That is usually. We are going to put it inside the sentence to describe that it does not happen all the time, but most of the time, usually. So, where should we put the word usually? Usually is an adverb. Where should we put this adverb? We put this adverb usually in front of the verb. So remember, half is, a, half is a verb. So put it in front of the verb. The members of the English club usually have their meetings after school. Do you see what I mean? My brother goes out to play with his friends. Now we are going to put in the word seldom. Where should we put the word seldom? So that the sentence is correct. But giving us a better picture of the situation. So we should put the word seldom. Seldom is an adverb. It is called an adverb of frequency. So where should we put the, the adverb? Seldom. Put it in front of the verb. So here the verb is goes. 
put it in front of the verb goes. So therefore, the answer would be my brother seldom goes out to play with his friends. Our principal advises all of us to study hard. It's the original sentence. Now, we are going to put the word often in this sentence to explain further a more detailed explanation. How often? How often? How frequent? So now we are going to slot in an adverb of frequency in this sentence. So where should the word often be? The word often should be in front of the verb. Where is the verb? The verb is advises, not study. Study is behind. Look for the first adverb. Look for the first adverb. So the first adverb is advises. Your adverb of frequency, your answer should be in front of the first verb, advises. Therefore, the answer is, our principal often advises all of us to study hard. It rains in the mornings and evenings or evenings. Again, you can see, identify first. Where is the verb? Which is the verb? The verb is rains. So we are going to put this word usually in this sentence so that we listener or so that we ourselves present our information more clearly. It's not every day but usually. It's not seldom, it's usually. So where do we put this word usually? We put the word usually in front of the verb. So what is the verb here? Rains. Therefore, you put usually in front of the word rains. Alright? That's it. We have already finished all. So, recap. Adverbs describe verbs. Okay? Adverbs are descriptive words. Adverbs describe verbs. In adverbs, we have three different parts. Number one, adverbs of manner. It answers the question, how they play. How do they play? They play happily. She reads. How does she read? She reads loudly. Second one is adverbs of time. It answers the question, when? When did it happen? When does it happen? At what time does it happen? At what time did it happen? It answers the question, when? So, all these words are called adverbs of time. Where can we put adverbs of time? It can be in front, it can be behind. As I said, basic, uh, in the, uh, during the basic years, like primary school, we usually ask students to write last Saturday first, and then to write the, the story behind. But as you go further, secondary school, working adults, we tell you that last Saturday, now on Wednesday, put it at the last the sentence but then we do sometimes put in front of the sentence when we want to emphasize that it happened last Saturday not last Sunday okay and for this adverbs of manner it can be in front it can be behind the adverb uh, the verb that's the beauty of adverbs you know you can put in front you can put behind and the last adverb is called adverbs of frequency it answers the question how often how often is it never is it always? Is it sometimes? Is it usually? Is it all the time? Is it seldom? Is it rarely? And where do we put these adverbs of frequency? We put them in front of the verb. Identify the verb and in front of the verb tell us how often it is. Whether it's often, usually, sometimes, or seldom, or uh, always. Okay, we put it in front of the, or often in front of the verb. Okay, so that's all for this lesson. My next video will be lesson 33. And that time, when I upload lesson 33, we will have seven more lessons before we complete the whole book, before I close, close curtain. As usual, if you want to buy my books, WhatsApp to me. If you want to learn further on a, uh, speaking, go to my TikTok, go to my Instagram. And if you want to learn English from me, either you come as a group 
or your own self individually you can always whatsapp to me okay you can request for a course with me we can either do online or if you are anywhere in Kluang you can do it uh, physically with me okay so thank you once again for watching I will see you in the next video lesson 33 remember to give me a like share and subscribe goodbye